Okay, hello to anyone watching this on YouTube. I'm joined here by Louise, who has given her express permission for this session that we're going to do together to be recorded. Louise and I had um, a consultation over Zoom several weeks ago now, so I've got a fair idea um, about what it is that she would like to work on today, but I will have that little catch up with her and see where she's at with that today. I may or may not kind of talk directly to the camera throughout the session and um, it may be that I just run the session as I would do normally from this point on. So I hope you find this video interesting. I hope it gives you a little bit more of an idea about what to expect from a hypnotherapy session with me, Catherine Tui. But obviously everyone is different, every session is different. Okay, good afternoon Louise. Hello, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for agreeing to do this and to be on the camera. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Remind me where you are in the country. So I'm probably pretty much as far south and as far away from you as could possibly be because I'm on the south coast, on the south of the south coast in a place called Leon Solent, which is, um, yeah, you can't get any further south unless you go across the water onto the Isle of Wight. Oh, amazing. Yeah, so it's sort of near Portsmouth, between Portsmouth on one side and Southampton the other side, both big sort of uh, seaside and uh, harbour towns, if you like. Very nice. And I bet it's beautiful. We're filming this in September, as you know, <laughs> and it's still nice and warm with you. Not so much with me in the northwest on the Isle of Man. <laughs> yes, yeah. Very, pretty, pretty far north from me, I reckon. <laughs> Definitely. And how wonderful that we can connect and work this way mm. over Zoom, such as the way of the world these days. Yeah, brilliant. So Louise, it's been, I think, a couple of weeks since we had our consultation. Yeah. And I've got, I've been looking through the notes from that conversation that we had um, and revisiting that. But I think it's worth for you to revisit and tell me what you would like to have happen as a result of this session. Well, I was kind of hoping you would refresh my memory as to what I said. <laughs> Aha, okay. Because um, a lot's gone on in the last couple of weeks and I have actually been poorly a couple of times. So um, not that that should have a direct effect on my memory, but I'm also hormonal. So a woman of a certain age. So any, I think it was about uh, sleep, going to bed yeah. earlier, taking care of myself and my sleep patterns more, wasn't it? Is yes. Right? Sleep, so like this, going to bed earlier, taking care of myself. And what was the last thing you said? Uh, taking care of my sleep, I think I said. Taking care of myself and my sleep patterns, yeah. My sleep patterns. Okay. Is that what I said last time? <laughs> it is, and you oh, came yeah. up with this great phrase that I've actually been borrowing and using with several clients since our conversation. Oh, because okay, it turns yeah. out other people have got a similar thing, and you said, I've created sleep procrastination mm. you've got a lot of self-awareness about that and we had a conversation about the kinds of things that you would like to be doing just recap how would you ideally like an evening a bedtime routine in the hours leading up to going mm. to sleep and, and that sleep time what would that look like for you I think the early part of the evening is going to be key. So I think I would like to be off my phone earlier, maybe off my phone by, I don't know, not that I'm on it constantly, but I do check. Sometimes it's the only time of the day that I have got to check up on it. So that sometimes becomes a bit of an excuse. So I'd like to be off my phone earlier. Um, maybe, I don't know what earlier is, eight o'clock at the latest maybe eight o'clock nine o'clock um and I would like to be able to get to bed so that I actually have chance to either journal or read and sort of decompress from the day while I'm tucked up and cozy in bed while I'm not being distracted by the dogs wanting cuddles or to be let out or their late night snack um the tv you know that keeps me awake because I let it you know I, I pretend that I'm really interested in something and I'm not interested in it at all I just yeah I don't feel like I want to go to bed just yet so 
Okay. So have you tried to do anything about this on your own? I have with varying degrees of success. So oh. sometimes I end up having to get to bed because I'm exhausted. Oh, so yeah. I'm in bed yeah. by nine o'clock sometimes. Not very often. Mm. Not very often because I'm now in the lucky position where I get to choose when I wake up. So because I know that I don't have to wake up or get up or, you know, super, super early, then that does allow me some flexibility with my bedtime. Because I think, well, as long as I'm getting at least seven hours, yeah. then, then if I go to bed at midnight, I can still get up at seven-ish and be okay. But then sometimes if I don't have to get up till eight, that means, you know, maybe I just won't go to bed till one. And then what's the point of that? So is that flexibility kind of a little almost like a get out of jail free car yeah like absolutely <laughs> yeah absolutely like, okay yeah no absolutely it's kind of you know it's like a child being given an inch and taking a mile you know I'm yeah. pushing my own boundaries <laughs> and I'm getting on my own nerves basically. okay and we I remember now we had a conversation about that little perhaps teenage rebel mm. Louise mm. perhaps in there yeah. going oh, I don't want to go to bed yet you yeah. can't tell me what to do you're not the boss of me springs to mind yeah you're not the boss of me which is very okay. frustrating because I'm like yes I am <laughs> yes I am the boss of you and I'm doing this for your own good <laughs> so ideally what time would you want to be going to sleep are you looking to have more regular sleeping patterns yes I think what I would like is during the week is I would like to go to bed at a time that allows me to have some sort of quiet, peaceful time to myself. My husband tends to go to bed earlier anyway. He's an early riser, so he's early to bed, early to rise. And so, but, you know, he's a pretty good sleeper. We have the light low, um, so I can still read and things like that. But I'm so tired by the time I get to bed, normally. I don't read. I write my gratitude journal, and then I'm kind of like, you know, falling asleep dribbling over my gratitude journal because I'm tired and I you know that kind of thing so I want to be able to get to bed and have half an hour to be in bed kind of feel cozy and relaxed and chilled out my husband can be fast asleep next door the the lights on so I can read I can have done my journal not being exhausted so that I can really give it some thought and I you know I it's a gratitude journal but it might be nice to do some other journaling or Mm -hmm. or stuff and meditation or that kind of thing so it would be really nice to have a half an hour evening routine because what that will then enable me to do if I go to bed earlier is then get up earlier so that I then have the kind of chilled morning that I really enjoy where I don't have to run around really yes. in a panic trying to get ready on time you know because I want to have um a really lovely morning routine as well which involves you know 10 minutes maybe just gathering my thoughts and a bit of meditation or something like that or taking the dog for a walk sitting outside with a cup of tea if the weather lets me that kind of thing and at the moment I'm just yeah, yes okay I can go to bed late because I don't have to get up early but when I don't go up early I then don't get chance to do all the other things that I need to do you know practical things as well before I then you know leave home to come to my office yeah, so it sounds like that time that you're kind of pretending there's something you're interested in watching, that mm. time looking at your phone is robbing you of that quality time that you really want for yourself. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good summation, yeah. And the ideal time is actually that you want that time in the morning starting your day with that kind of an intention in that headspace, time for yeah. you. And then switching off earlier to get to bed earlier, ready for the next day. Yeah, it's kind of a cyclical, you know, both inform the other. If I go to bed earlier, mm. I can get up earlier. If I get up earlier, I can have more time to start my day the way that I would like it. You know, but in order to do that, I then I need to go to bed earlier that night, if you see what I mean. So one yeah. does inform the other. I just kind of, it's almost like I want to shift my day by I don't know why I'm doing this um shift my day by, by about I don't know half an hour 45 minutes something like that 
just kind of correct it. It's like a course correction, really, I guess. Sort of course correction. Mine. Yeah, my friend of mine uh, speaks about course correcting a lot, and I and I like it, and I I think it's something that we, you know, need to do regularly because we get taken off course for whatever reason. So I think it's a really nice way of kind of like, yep, I want to go in this direction. And in order to go in that direction, I've just got to course correct. Those little adjustments. I like it. I like it. And of course, um, talking about kind of like making micro steps is also really important when I, in my work that I do. So I think I've got to, take a little bit of my own advice and make sure I don't try and do anything too drastic otherwise I'm gonna that teenager is gonna come out and rebel big time (laughs) yeah got you okay Louise now you are a hypnotherapist so I know that you know this stuff and I I think actually it's worth just kind of acknowledging that you are a hypnotherapist and that you still have hypnotherapy you believe in this stuff oh god I have yeah. hypnotherapy. Never trust a hypnotherapist who doesn't have hypnotherapy. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't and, and say if, that. <laughs> well, and if they tell you that they've got their ducks in a row, they're lying. <laughs> yeah, we never arrive. We never arrive. So Louise, and, and Louise and I know each other because we've trained in the same um, hypnosis academy, the Jacqueline Hypnosis Academy. Um, and I know that Louise has done lots of other training as well, as have I. And that's how we come to know each other. So Louise, I know that you obviously know this stuff. When I'm working with a client, I send them a video to what we in our world call the pre-talk. The video, when I upload this to YouTube, I'll put the link below. It is on my YouTube channel. And I think the video is called What You Need to Know Before Your First Hypnotherapy Session. And I did say that to you, Louise. Did you get a chance to watch that? Yes, I did. And I thought it was brilliant. Good Very stuff. Helpful. Yeah. And the reason that I have that there on a video is to maximize the live time that we have so that we can just get straight in with that session. Do you have any questions for me? Um, I don't think so. I'm going to be uh, open minded and really interested Um to see how this goes and you know I I'm, I really want some positive change so I'm yes. looking forward to it excellent you really want this excellent because this stuff doesn't work if we don't really want it as we all know yeah. good now um I want to just frame this and you'll know where I'm going with this but it's almost as though it sounds almost as though there's a part of you you know what's coming there's a part of you that really wants to make this shift so have that morning routine that chilled out cozy evening time so that you're getting the right amount of sleep you're doing those things you want to do you're starting the day in the way that you want to on your own terms calmly chilled out relaxed before you go off to do your wonderful work But it's almost as though there's another part of you that just wants to stay sitting there on the sofa. And just delay going to bed. (laughs) So I'm going to be speaking directly to that part of you that runs that. I'm going to frame it as a habit. Would you say that it's become a habit? I think it may have started off as one thing and then formed into a habit yeah I think it you know I think it I think it may have been a bit more complicated at some point but I think certainly now it is a habit and a habit that I justify almost you know it it, it's that yeah it's that you're not the boss of me this is what I want to do and then I do it and then I wake up and I'm like why did I do that that is not what I want to do yeah so, so it's definitely the a different part the fact that you're justifying it shows that there's this yeah. conflict going yeah. on between those yeah. those two parts of you and it's the other part of you that wakes up and goes why, why did you do that yeah yeah so, so we're gonna have we're gonna speak directly to that part and as you know when we speak to the unconscious the unconscious always answers first it will always feel like you're making it up 
it often feels daft, but we'll get these unconscious, involuntary, honest signals. And for some people, it might be, we're going to be using your hand. Incidentally, do you have any shoulder issues? I do, but I could use something on my desk so that I can prop my you can prop hand it up. up, if that's helpful. Yeah, I won't, I won't be able to lift my shoulder. I mean, it's that's actually my fine. left shoulder's worse, but um, I don't really want to put any undue stress on my right shoulder. Yeah, no, understood. Still... Will you be able to leave it on the desk? We can adjust the angle of the I can, camera. Yeah, I'll, yeah I'll, get, um, I'll get a couple of books, if that's okay. Yeah. Do you want to do and that now, rest my... Yeah, sure. Let's get that. First sessions always have a little bit of um, time just adjusting, getting the right angle so that I can see things. And it's entirely possible to, to get signals in other ways. We don't have to use that hand, but I know Louise is happy to do this with her elbow uh, propped is, up. Is that high enough? Is that enough of you? Yep, that's but, gonna be absolutely fine. And I will have my elbow on the book, is that okay? That's gonna be absolutely fine. Yeah, so you can just relax there for now. Sure. So as you know, when we're using that hand, it may be that when I'm speaking to your unconscious, there are some involuntary movements, some signals that let me know that I've got that communication going with your unconscious. You don't have to try and do anything, Louise. You just allow these signals to happen. And it may be that you get kind of a slight movement, perhaps in a finger. It can be very, very small. Some people, it's like a little movement just in the wrist. But other people, there's very little or no movement whatsoever. Some people, they might have their eyelids start to flutter behind those closed lids because you'll have your eyes closed other people their head might start to nod or their body sway slightly it might be that your hand starts to feel lighter and lighter and drift up slowly perhaps not if you've got that issue with your shoulder as you know you'll be able to adjust your position and ensure that you're comfortable throughout mm -hmm. with yeah. some people there are no actual physical signals and that's down to me to calibrate any shifts that I can see in you and proceed with the session as as I calibrate from what I get back from you. Are you happy with that? Yes, I am. So good. When I speak to that part of you that that is responsible for that habit, I know it might sound mad, but I'm going to ask that part. And first of all, I'm going to thank that part because it's my belief that that part has a positive intention for you, perhaps to give you pleasure in some way perhaps to protect you in some way. I'll ask that part to explain to you at some level of awareness what its positive intention is for you. And then I'll ask that part to go into your creative mind, the part of your mind that has ideas and dreams and to generate positive, healthy new behaviors that fulfill that same intention. Yep. And you might consciously be aware of what these new positive behaviours are, but you might not. And with the best one in the world, it's not your conscious mind that I'm speaking to, it's your unconscious mind. Yeah. So we'll get that response from your unconscious and those new behaviours. We'll see if your unconscious will accept that new behaviour and then leave that old habit in the past where it belongs. Wonderful. Sound good? Yeah, very good. So the last question remains then. Oh, one more thing. Do you need to be done by any particular hard stop time? I can tailor the, the session according um, to I you. will double check. Yeah. I'm sure I do have quite, um, so I think we said three o'clock, didn't we? That so sounds that absolutely fine. Yep, that's absolutely fine. More than enough time. I can go, I can go on a little bit longer, but I, you know, that would be good. more than enough time, I am sure. Okay, now what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to spotlight you. Where are we? Full, full screen. Ooh, I want to make sure that I have my screen looking how I normally do. There we are. Okie dokie, Louise. So we're going to do this induction together. So with your, if you just prop your elbow up like that on those books, I just want to check that I can see. Just allow that wrist to just flop so you're comfortable. So okay? could you perhaps adjust your camera down a little bit so I can see perhaps a little bit more? That's going to be perfect. 
what I'm going to do is shift over a little bit and then I've got that's better. Is that okay? So we go, perfect. So we're going to do this together, Louise. So if you just pop that arm down, in a moment, I'll ask you to pick that arm up and allow your eyes to close and to push that arm down and allow your eyes to open. We'll do that several times. So we're timing it with the breath, the little bit of a coordination thing. So here we go. As you breathe in, just bring that arm up and allow your eyes to close. That's right. And as you push that arm down, relax, exhale, allow those eyes to open. Good. And whenever you're ready to take in another breath, bring that arm up and allow those eyes to close. As you exhale, push that arm down, relax even deeper, allow those eyes to open. That's right. Bringing the arm up as you inhale, those eyes will close. As you exhale, push that arm down, relax twice as deep, those eyes will open. Good. Bringing the arm up, those eyes will close. As you exhale, push the arm down, relax twice as deep, those eyes will open. Bringing the arm up, those eyes will close. Good. And now just allow that arm to hang. Imagine that arm just locking into place. Feel that shoulder joint tightening, Louise. Imagine now that there's a string tied around that wrist, a string and attached to the top of that string is a bunch of beautiful helium balloons, all different colors. And perhaps you can imagine those balloons just knocking against each other, sound of them bobbing. Imagining now that that arm is just hanging there all by itself. And imagine now that there's nothing you can do about that. As you simply just relax, listen to the sound of my voice and know that for the next however long, there's nothing for you to do. There's nobody expecting anything of you. Nothing for you to do except to just listen to the sound of my voice. Follow any instructions. And just allow yourself to have this experience. This experience we call hypnosis. This state of enhanced focus and awareness where you can make powerful, positive, permanent changes for your greatest benefit. That's right. Hypnosis isn't a state of eyelids, but with the eyes closed, you can begin to relax even deeper. Hypnosis isn't a state of relaxation, but you can allow that relaxation to form part of this experience, this time for you. Time for you to make positive change that you want, Louise. That's right. <coughs> and imagine now that those tiny muscles around your eyes are completely relaxed. So relaxed now that you can imagine that if you tried to open those eyes, they just wouldn't work. Those tiny muscles around your eyes so completely relaxed that your eyes won't open. Just imagine that those eyes won't open and when you're sure they won't open, Test that they won't open. Really try and open those eyes. That's right. You're doing that really well. And you can stop testing. So long as your eyes remain closed, nothing we do will bother you in any way. And each sound of my voice will guide you deeper. Any sounds in your environment, the sounds of life going on around you will guide you deeper 
deeper inside your hypnosis, your experience. Every exhale guides you deeper. That's right. As your unconscious mind is listening. That other part of the mind, the critical part, the conscious mind may drift in and out. And that's only a sign that you're doing it right. That part of your mind can have a little holiday, Louise. While I speak to your unconscious, your powerful unconscious, it's been looking after you, keeping you alive since the day you were born, since the moment you were born. Your unconscious controls your body temperature. Your unconscious maintains your heartbeat. Your unconscious is tracking millions of bits of information that you don't consciously need to be aware of. There's no need. And all that's needed to build a rapport with the unconscious is to establish a line of communication. And I don't know whether it will be that perhaps there might be a movement on that hand, maybe a movement in those fingers or perhaps a flickering of that wrist. Only your unconscious knows what it will choose. That's right, just allow those signals to occur, that movement, those honest, unconscious signals. It may be that your eyelids start to flutter, that your head starts to nod when you're unconscious. Signals that it is listening and ready to communicate, that's right. That's right. Just allow those signals to become stronger. Very good. You don't need to try and do anything. Just allow it. Good. And now I ask Louise's unconscious mind to hand over those signals to the part of her that runs the habit. That habit around delaying sleep. This sleep procrastination habits. When I'm speaking directly to that part of Louise, just allow those signals to occur once more. That's right, thank you. And I thank this part of Louise. I know that you have a very positive intention for her. Just explain to Louise what that positive intention is. And when you understand on some level of awareness, Louise, just say yes or nod your head. Good. And I thank this part of Louise. You're doing a fantastic job. She's fit, she's well, she's healthy. But Louise would like to make some positive changes that she has decided are in her best interest. These adjustments, these shifts. So I ask now this part of Louise to go into her creative mind, to the part of her mind that has ideas and dreams and to generate positive, healthy, new behaviors that allow you to fulfill that same positive intention you have for her. Positive, healthy, new behaviors, nothing to do with any substance, any chemicals, any foods, positive, healthy, new behaviors that allow you to fulfill that same positive intention. That's right. And as this part is searching the weeds, you just allow yourself to get really comfortable. As you listen to the sound of my voice, as you connect deeper, deeper down within yourself. Connecting with that innermost part of you. The spiritual you, the very essence of what makes you, Louise. 
as you rise up now through your body and out of the top of your head. That's right, leaving that physical body behind in that chair. Floating higher and higher, that's right. So high now past the rooftops, like a balloon that's been let go by a child in the park. So high now that you penetrate the Earth's atmosphere. And from that high up position, in outer space, you look down and you can see or just get a sense of that beautiful blue planet we call Earth beneath you. And when you can get a sense of planet Earth there beneath you, Louise, just let me know by nodding your head, saying yes. Good. And as you look at that planet, you can think about the Billions of people that live on that planet. The billions of people of which you are only one. Just a girl in the world. All of those people with their own concerns, their own busy routines. Noticing from this distance, this perspective, those things that once seem to take on huge significance have hardly any significance, if any, at all. That's right. And now as you look down beneath you, in between you and planet Earth, there's a giant target like an archery target. And you can see the different colored bands around the outside and in the center is a huge bullseye. What color is the bullseye, Louise? Black. Black, that's right. Now onto that black bullseye. Place everything associated with that sleep procrastination, that delaying what you actually want to do. Place all of that negativity, all of the past, perhaps the original reason, any memories, any negative emotions, negative sensations, negative images, things that you don't need or want anymore. Place that all onto that black bullseye. You take as much time as you need and when it's all there, let me know. All that. Good. Now, Louise, is any of the stuff on that black bullseye helpful to you in any way? No. Would your life be any worse off if you were to let go of that completely today? No. Now, in a moment, I'm going to make this sound. And you will shoot through the center of that target like an arrow. And be brave, because as you pass through the center of that target, you might experience that negativity more intensely than you've ever felt it before, but it will only be for a fraction of a second and then it will never bother you again. So prepare yourself now, Louise. Because on the other side of that target lies freedom. And 
you're out the other side, Louise, just floating in a place of absolute freedom and bliss. Just for a moment, think about those that you love dearly, those people in your life that light you up, or perhaps those special animals, those dogs of yours. As you think about that love that you have for those special people, those special animals, know that you, Louise, can have that cosy time you want and deserve tonight and every night. You deserve to allow yourself the kind of morning to start your day in the way you wish. That's right. See the faces of all of those people and those animals that you love, those that love you. And as you think about that love, know that you, Louise, can prioritize your needs, your energy levels, your routines, to ensure and allow yourself to have the kind of day, the quality of day that you want, you truly deserve. Think about that love and shrink that love down now into a ball of light the size of a golf ball and allow this light, this loving light to enter in now through your heart, lighting you up from the inside. That's right. What colour is this light, Louise? White. White, that's right. And just allow this white light, this white glow to spread throughout your entire body. Now, as you breathe in this feeling, that's right. And it travels throughout every cell every atom, every neuron, every fiber and molecule in your body sending love, sending light, healing, washing away any remnants of that old useful, useless habit that old thing you've left behind. And in its place, allowing you the space, that time for yourself. As you go out into the future now and see yourself settling down for the evening, switching off, switching off devices, screens at that time that is suitable for you as you're establishing your nighttime routines your bedtime routines perhaps journaling meditating reading that cozy relaxed chilled out time just for you Allowing you to sleep deeply, easily, naturally, effortlessly tonight, whenever you choose for the appropriate time for you. Allowing you to awaken feeling refreshed, revitalized, in that positive frame of mind, knowing that you allowed yourself sufficient sleep that evening before was conducive to this now morning time, your time, quiet, peaceful time for you, Louise, to meditate. You see yourself now doing those things in those mornings, having that time. Taking the dogs for a walk. Perhaps getting outside for a cup of tea.
see that morning time, Louise. And just imagine now that I take a photo, freeze image, and make that image really bright. Turn up the colors. Make it really sharp, like high definition. And then make that image really big. And if you need to make any adjustments to make that image really compelling, really exciting for you, inviting for you, make any adjustments to that now. And when it's just right for you, Louise, let me know. Good. And from today, you'll be able to meditate on this image as you remind yourself throughout the day of this image, this thing that you truly want that is yours, you get to decide. And from tonight and every night, when it's time, Time to start switching off. You'll automatically remember this image will just pop into your mind so that it becomes automatic and easy for you to prioritize yourself, to switch off those devices as you look forward to that chilled out evening. It becomes the treat for yourself at the end of the day as you know that you are giving yourself the best care, care for yourself, care for your sleeping patterns, allowing you, Louise, to have the quality of life, the quality of energy that you truly want and deserve. That's right. Just imagine now, that it's this evening. And just get an image of yourself sitting down, perhaps on a sofa. Perhaps you're looking at your phone or the TV's on. Just watch yourself. Notice. As you observe yourself from above, imagine now that you're a bird and you're just watching, observing from above. Birds don't have words. Birds don't judge. And just observe now, Louise, your body language. Observe the way you're breathing. And notice what your beliefs are, your self-talk. From this position of observation, just observe now is that Louise beneath you makes adjustments, positive adjustments to her body language that facilitate this chilled out, relaxing evening routine. Notice now, make any adjustments to that Louise's breathing. Become aware of her self-talk, the things she is telling herself, making sure that it is now positive and conducive to that routine you truly want. Good. 
Those three things, Louise, body language, breathing, and beliefs, those three Bs, body language, breathing, and beliefs, are an effective form of self-hypnosis. So that from today, in any situation, should you become aware of yourself getting in the way of what you truly want, you now automatically remember to change your body language, your breathing, and your beliefs, which is just your self-talk. Noticing that when you open up your chest, roll back your shoulders, lift your chin and smile, it's so much easier to make those positive decisions, to act and behave in that positive way. When your body is open, your brain naturally follows. Noticing how when you breathe low and slow, that's right. You can cleanse your mind. And when your beliefs are positive, when you tell yourself, yes, I can. As you remind yourself that this is what you want. This is what you want. And that chair you're on now, Louise, is a time machine. And it sucks you back through time and space as though time and space no longer existed. I go with you. We're in this time machine together and it stops. The doors open. I stay in the time machine. You step outside and you see that teenage Louise. Just go up to that teenage Louise. Put your arm around her. And thank her. Thank her for everything that she did for you. Thank her for all of her positive intentions for you. Let her know that she's safe. Tell her how loved she is. Just take a few moments now to tell that teenage Louise anything that she needs to hear. Tell her how to be the very best woman she can be. And hug her, Louise. Hold that younger you. Hold her in love. And when you know that she is healed, and when she understands that she's done her job, she's served her duty, 
And she understands that you're now a grown up, you're in charge. You can release her from your embrace. Just let me know when she's ready. That's right. And you turn back towards the time machine. You step over a line into your future. You turn around and see that younger you looking back at you. And she's smiling and waving. You get back in the time machine. I'm there, the doors close. We leave any of that hurt, anything from the past, in the past where it belongs, noticing now how different it seems through adult eyes, coming all the way back, all the way back. And you find yourself now looking at a circle of light in front of you, almost like a spotlight on a stage, a circle of light. And inside that circle of light, Louise, is your autonomy. With that autonomy comes your responsibility to accept any consequences for your own actions. Whenever you are ready, please, step into that spotlight. Step into your autonomy, your right to choose recognizing that there is always a right to choose. But that choice is ultimately yours. You, now as an adult, That's right. Feel that light on your face, Louise. Breathe in that sense of autonomy. That freedom to know that you get to decide, you get to choose. Noticing how that feels in your mind, in your body. Noticing the color of empowerment. First color that comes to mind, Louise. What is this color? A pinky red. Pinky red, that's right. And whilst you've been on this journey and you'll be able to take that pinky red sense of empowerment with you from now on, whilst you've been on that journey, that part of you that was responsible for the sleep procrastination habit has been busy searching the healthy, positive new behaviors that allow you, Louise, complete freedom from that old habit. And I'm speaking directly once more to that part of Louise. Of those new behaviors, choose the very best one, 
the one that is most appropriate for Louise and the one that allows her complete freedom from the old habit so that it doesn't even enter into her mind to stay on the sofa or do those old things that no longer suit. And once you've made your selection, just give Louise a signal, perhaps on that hand. If you're experiencing that signal, Louise, just let me know. Good, thank you. And I'm checking now with all parts of Louise. Are all parts of Louise happy with this new behavior, this new arrangement for this part? Good. And I thank this part of Louise for making this positive change. Thank this part of Louise and respect this part of Louise for making this positive permanent change. And imagine now, Louise, that you are sitting on the opposite side of the room from where you are now, looking back at yourself. Or imagine looking at yourself as I see you on the camera, on Zoom. You can notice and observe your body language, your posture. Notice the rhythm of your breathing. Notice the expression on that Louise's face, how free she looks. And only as quickly as your unconscious mind is ready and willing to accept all of the powerful, positive, permanent changes you've made today at the deepest automatic level, at a cellular and molecular level. Only as quickly as your unconscious mind can accept those changes at that automatic cellular molecular level, will you be able to float back over to that side of the room, float back inside of your body and allow all of these changes to be fully installed, fully integrated into every cell, every neuron, every atom like an update of software on a mobile phone. That's right. All the new programs, the new systems up and running. And when that process is complete, Louise, and you are ready to come all the way back, you'll be able to open your eyes Smile, stretch, and feel absolutely incredible. Taking your time. You become aware of your surroundings. Good. Hi. Oh, hello. Wide awake now, Louise. Have a stretch. <sighs> well done. Well done, you. Oh, that was a journey. It was. Yeah. It was. Hmm. How did you find that experience? Yeah, very... Uh, I, there was a, a definite light bulb moment and... They are, um, it's going to make me a bit tearful actually, but uh, yeah, it, it links in with some other things that are changing at the moment. Yes. And the word was autonomy. Wow. Mm. Wow. And I'm, I'm uh, making some other changes in other areas of my life which require my autonomy. Yes and my self-responsibility and I felt I literally felt my body move I felt like I was over to one side and it felt like I just went 
whoop. I mean, I have no idea if that actually portrayed physically, but I flipped, I could feel it. I felt like I was over to one side, a bit kind of, you know, <laughs> a bit slumpy. And then you said the circle of autonomy, step into it. And I just felt like I was like, yes, that's it. <laughs> there I There's am. There's your course correction. Yeah. <laughs> you did that for yourself. I didn't even weave that into the session. You did that. Amazing. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that was amazing. That was really, yeah, really powerful. And like I say, uh, connects with other elements of, you know, my life where autonomy is necessary and required. So yeah, yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. I felt in super, super safe hands all the way through. Good. I'm so pleased. Thank you. And thank you so much for agreeing to, to do this session with me, for agreeing for it to be recorded and uploaded. And um, please keep me up to date as to how that routine is going for with, you. With pleasure. And I know that you're going to enjoy it. I know that you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, it's no, be I'm easy. sure. It is. Easy and effortless. Easy. <laughs> Absolutely. You well, can Louise, have a drink unless... of water. Yeah, I was going to say, unless you have anything else that you want to, to say or to let me know, that is the end of our session. And what I always say to people is expect to feel different. Most people say, oh, it's really weird, but in a good way. Mm. Yeah, looking <laughs> forward to it. to feel different and expect it to be easy. But just each time that you notice yourself doing those things that you want to be doing, where in the past you would have been doing those old things, just give yourself a little pat on the back and, and celebrate it, you know, go me, because we automatically recreate what we celebrate. So each time you're like, yes, go Louise, your brain will naturally want to do more of that. Yeah, I'm looking the forward to it. The other thing that I mentioned during that session was these three Bs. For anyone watching who's interested, and you might be interested as a hypotherapist, this is something that I've learned from Laurie Hammond. You know Laurie's work, don't you? And so she uses this. I don't know if she came up with it. I think she probably did because she's awesome. Those three Bs as a form of self-hypnosis, but basically behind everything we do, there's a body language, there's a breathing pattern, and there's um, our beliefs, our self-talk. So if you're just feeling flat and oh, can't be bothered moving off the sofa, chances are the body language is slumped over. Mm -hmm. The breathing's probably shallow, a bit lackluster. And the self-talk is, you're not the boss of me. I don't want to. I'm just going to stay <laughs> here five minutes more, whatever. So physically, proactively change those three things, opening up the body, lifting the chin, smiling, even if you're faking it, because actually the brain will follow. It's very hard to feel down and low when we're open and smiling like that. Changing that breathing so you're breathing low and slow, right down. I like to say breathe down, almost like down into the belly. And those beliefs, that positive self-talk, I can do this. This is okay. I use those three Bs for so many different things. It works for food cravings it works for just building yourself up to get ready for a new client anything you can change those three bees and that's your little takeaway thank you my, my pleasure we use those thanks louise keep me up to date and i look forward to seeing you very soon brilliant thanks ever so much Catherine. really enjoy the really rest of your day it. darling you'll sleep well tonight take care bye <laughs>